Ready to get active? Think Bombas, the better basics that take sweat wicking, blister preventing, friction free movement seriously. Go head to toe Bombas in lightweight t shirt designs to feel cool against your skin, underwear so airy and breathable you might forget you're wearing any, and socks designed to make every workout more comfortable. Bombas are a gym bag staple that are made to last, and if they experience any wear and tear, Bombas will replace them for life. Socks, underwear, and t-shirts are the number one, two, and three most requested items in homeless shelters. That's why for every comfy item you purchase, Bombas donates another comfy item to someone experiencing homelessness. Bombas 100% happiness guarantee means you're covered for life. Reach out anytime to their happiness team for easy returns, exchanges, or replacements. Go to bombas.com slash TMGW and use code TMGW for 20% off your first purchase. This might get weird. Are we rolling? We're rolling. Well, then cheers, Grace Helbig. Cheers, memory heart. Uh, how do you know that Chip Morgan is home? I have seltzer in the house. Oh, yeah, that's true. I was also looking at this can for the first time. I don't think I've ever seen this brand before. He came home the other night with a 24-pack of seltzer. Okay. Didn't even know they made those. <laughs> 24 packs it's fully the size of like an old school suitcase mm-hmm. and so i'm like oh what larry what? is tearing apart yeah. chip sneakers out there. I, i'm i'm seeing when i should intervene <laughs> larry is in our view eating chips insoles full-on neon fluorescent green insoles in black shoes that larry's just ripping, out, ripping. out like a magician takes a handkerchief out of a hat <laughs> i mean i think i don't i mean he's gonna have to learn he's doing real dog shit he's right do- now it's still okay it's- this blows my mind because from yeah. being around beans for a decade yeah. i'm like do you see that dog being a dog in your yard right now <laughs> grace this morning we played fetch oh like, my god like i am still in awe like I'll, I'll see him do something like he has this duck okay toy that he plays with that's uh-huh. got all this crinkly material yeah in it. yeah I'm not a fan of the crinkles. Yeah, I don't know if that's new, but yeah, Goose has had toys like that too. Or it yeah. just sounds like... Cellophane. Yeah. It sounds like cellophane, and I'm like, maybe it sounds to him like he's like fighting back. Or, yeah. or you know what I mean? Or like the organs are collapsing yeah. inside of this animal. But he goes wild on it, and I'm always just like, who let the dogs out? <laughs> I'm like, can you believe Can you believe there's a dog in this house? There's been a dog in this house for 10 years, but she's more of a, a docile mouse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's... um. She's she's to me like when you go into a haunted mansion and there's those paintings on the walls and the eyes follow you. Yeah. That's like what beans, beans is in this house. <laughs> the need- eyes just follow you around <laughs> as you walk around. I need one of those paintings. <laughs> Did uh, you ever do one of those like gothic paintings of Remember when everyone was getting like, here's my dog yeah. in an old colonel's uniform. I have, yeah, a brand <laughs> years ago sent me one of Goose and I had it displayed prominently in my house because it seems like it's a pretty legit piece of artwork, yeah. substantial. And uh, Elliot was like, this is, you got a lot of stuff in your house with your dog's face on it. Oh, really? So it's in a closet right now um, because it's still so substantial. I don't want to get rid of it. Yeah. I don't know what to do That's with it. That's a storage it. uniter. But I, I do still have it because it's like nice. It's like yeah. one of the nicer pieces of art that I have in it's my house. It's beautiful. I mean, there was a minute there where we were on tour, like back in like the YouTube hype days that like yeah. people were legitimately bringing gorgeous art of our pets. Truly to, to like, beautiful stuff. To all the shows. Really showed a lot of skill, yeah. a lot of talent from a lot of people that watched our content yes. that was like too much to process in real time. Right. Exactly. <laughs> but it's, it's just so funny because... Uh, I had a friend be like, do you still have that oil painting of beans? And I'm like, I'm sure I do. It was too nice to get rid of. But like how much like I could have a gallery show based on like how much good beans art is probably in a storage unit. That's a, sometimes I look at Goose and I'm like, you have no idea. No clue. No idea. The the art that you've inspired Mm -hmm. in different aspects of this world that still I have no idea. Yeah, uh, Larry's I'm just, gone. I'm just trying to get eyes on Larry. Larry's gone. Okay. He's maybe burying them somewhere if he's doing real dog shit. Hold I don't on. Know. Uh, Do t- you want to get eyes on Larry? Tiniest pause. Getting eyes on Larry. Okay. <laughs>
There's um also just a tiny coffee pot sitting in the yard. So he's just sunbathing, y'all. Oh, okay. He got tired. Yeah, he's just up against the fence, taking it all in, you know. He'll get back in for round two. Oh, Sorry you know enough. it. You know it. <laughs> oh, anyway, how are you, Grace? I am good. I am, I have, you might hear it, I'm a little congested today. Allergies, Is right? Al- yeah, everyone else out there with allergies, let me know if you're going through it. Here comes Larry, back in. Hi, Larry. Of, uh, were the allergies too much for you out there? I know. Oh, just you saying that. That'd be a pretty good drag king name. Al. Al Urgies. Yeah. The name's Al Urgies. Yeah. And he's like, Hachu, nice to meet you. Yeah. I, I need- <laughs> no, are we not on board? Are we not on board? <laughs> no, I think it's great. I'm trying to think of, yeah. What else? Oh, death drop. If yes. they sneeze and then death drop. Oh, my God. Or like something with EpiPens. Many options there. Many I love options. this. Feel free to steal it, you guys. Please do. We're not going to do anything with 90% of the ideas we throw around on this podcast. If anyone executes it, we'll say an idea and then be like, we're going to do that as soon as we stop recording. Boom. However, last week we actually followed through. Oh, my God. We made some science happen last week. Yep. You remember we were talking about the uh tiktok live that i saw where they were trying to pop popcorn kernels with a hair straightener yeah we did it and it happened way faster than i thought it would but the thing is is that like it when you think about it when you those hair straighteners they can get up to like 420 yeah. degrees and like that's the temperature of like a pan right like and a dutch oven up, they get up to 400 degrees in like 30 seconds i know when i think about that too much i'm like this is the most dangerous thing in my house right now right why does my sauna bag take 20 minutes yeah. which i was in earlier but you can go see the full video of that up on our patreon right? yes yeah. I, I put a snippet on instagram because i had to a little app- appetizer but it's the whole vid on patreon and uh while we're talking about that before we get into all our hijinks yeah. goofs and spoofs i want to say for people listening that we are actually doing a live stream on Friday, this Friday at Mm -hmm. 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. That's for any patron, no matter what tier. Um, So if you're thinking about joining, that would be like a good time to hop on. Yeah. Yeah. And we Um, are playing Dream Phone. Which I don't know if I've ever actually played Dream Phone growing up. I didn't either. I've only like messed around with it in the version i have as an adult woman oh my god because the the concept of yeah. the game is that there's a phone yeah and it <laughs> and it gets you're called. onto it you're onto it. it gets called and we find out who's got a crush on us yes i think it's like you narrow down the guys well they'll be like well okay. it's not tim or, it's or like, so it's like a murder mystery but yes. for the love of your life who your secret admirer is i think that's the point but so we're gonna we're gonna have like an uh, early 90s yes. sleepover vibes yes like where are the very outfits? popular now should we make bagel bites or a hundred percent how are you doing with gluten though what can we make I'm that's fucking uh, around i'm fucking i'm fucking around and okay. i'm finding out that's really what's <laughs> happening well, right literally now. before we started <laughs> before we started recording i said uh-oh Stomach's doing something weird. Shouldn't have had that 20 ounce green juice before we started. Okay, tell yeah, me everything. I went last week and took a SIBO test, actually, a breath yeah. test, um, because I was having like pains that were similar to when I had SIBO last time. And uh, I don't have SIBO, turns out. Okay. Got the results, which is great because huge peace of mind. Um, and because also, is that like a medicine thing you have to do? Or you is can that get like an a antibiotic cleanse. and then you basically do a low FODMAP diet and it's up to you to be as strict or as lenient mm-hmm. as you want. And it's a lot of emphasis on like onions and garlic. Yeah. At least for me, that's a primary point of sensitivity. So Man. I just kind of am messing around with um, anti-inflammatory stuff, low Whoa. FODMAP stuff. but um, And people have lots of different... Uh, recipes out there, which is great because turns out a ton of people our age uh, have gut issues. And look I'm at the just, shit we used to eat. I think. I mean, look at the shit. If I, I literally have documentation of exactly what I made yeah. to get me to the point that I'm at right now True. with my gut health. There's also so so much correlation in psychology between your gut and like your mental health too. Mm. So obviously, trying to make that a priority to like care about. I say that, and then also I get high and I eat cheesecake like and, like it's my last meal on earth. Yeah, but I so will say. It's a we don't do like okay the kids these days yeah if our stomachs are messed up from yeah. eating stuff like there are generations who eat hot cheetos every day yeah oh like yeah. all that spice is gonna it's gotta affect your innards yeah i'm trying to be 
I'm trying to be balanced Dr. Hillbilly over here. <laughs> but I do eat shit at the same yeah. time. Um, so it's just a small balance, trying to be more conscious with like gut friendly foods. And then I have noticed that when I do opt for like gluten free pastas or like gluten free pizzas, it does digest a little better than better. regular. I feel a little bit better. Damn. So I'm not fully convinced, yeah. but I'm trying to be just be a little bit more active in that area. I had a stomach ache last night. And Was it from all of the day's activities? <laughs> well, we'll get into the day's activities, but the thing is, is uh, I didn't have any popcorn. Well, we'll get more on that later. Uh, okay. I only had the beer. Yeah. Um, but okay. then, <laughs> and then Chip and I decided we hadn't done this in four ever yeah to go to trivia night last night fun and like we used to do like a a tuesday trivia we really loved at this bar yeah. but they have one at this bar on mondays red lion mm -hmm. which for you guys listening is like the oldest german beer garden kind so of fun bar in la and it's it's really great it's got like a lot of outdoor space but the Trivia itself is in the restaurant that, you know, like feels like it hasn't been yeah. dusted in like That's 40 years. That's where we years. had the Grace Helbig show for E! That was yes. our final rap party was at that place. Oh, I was blackout that night. <laughs> you Welcome to the club. We well, were all celebrating. <laughs> I think of all the nights I've had, I was like, I, I said to Chip, I was like, the only other time I've eaten in this room was right after my second night of Guns N' Roses in a row. <laughs> I'm like, God, they've seen some things. But we decided to go and... Uh, Long story short, my I got a stomach ache, and then I was like, "Why?" I mean, like shooting pain, where I was Ugh. like, "Oh God, do I did I develop a gluten allergy today?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I was like, "I mean, since we've been here, I've only had split pea soup, a pretzel stick, mashed potatoes, sauerkraut, <laughs> a pickle, a vegan sausage, and <laughs> that's literally when people are like two gin and tonics, <laughs> one German beer. Like I was like, what? How am I gonna make it?" When I think, <laughs> this is why I don't love talking about like gut health and like where I'm at with it is because I know the problem. Right. It's me. Yeah. It's not about the food. It's my choices of what I'm eating. If I were to document everything, you'd be like, well, we yeah. got a primary issue right here. This is not good that's, stuff for you. That's your anti-hero songs like, could it be the garlic or the onions? It's me. It's me. Hi. <laughs> no, I, it's me. I'm high. Yep. I'm the problem. It's me. Exactly. But so we went to trivia night. We came in fourth. Nice. Just there, the two of you. Just the two of us. See, Good that's job. the thing is like, oh, there were lots of teams that were like up to six. Yeah. That feels very, yeah, one-sided. It was great. But so we sat at the bar and like teams had all the tables. But the, the trivia host, she was this blonde woman. And like right before it started, she came into the bartender and she was like, I thought she was talking for just for someone else. She was like, could you turn at least one of the TVs on the Dodgers game? He was like, sure, or whatever. As soon as she was done saying the rounds questions, which uh -huh. I loved, we didn't have to write them down and turn them in. Uh -huh. So she didn't have to tally. It was all like through their oh, website. Oh, nice. And so that was great because sometimes you don't hear the question. Yeah. You know, or it's a visual round. So this was lovely to be like, oh, right. okay, we can go back, we get it in, we submit it, and then we see the scores so yeah. we can see how far behind we are people. But that means she didn't have to spend the time tallying the scores. Grace, when I tell you I've never heard someone yell at a TV screen so much in my life. What? It was like, she was like, God damn it, that was not out. He was sick. So she was screaming. watching the game while hosting Trivia Night. Yes. But when I'm saying, like, have you ever seen some... It was like... I know it wasn't this. Uh -huh. But it was like when you were trying to, like, drop in names of players or something to, like, impress people. Okay, yeah. Like, everything was by the... It was like she was having a... Wow. a, a she was doing a podcast and her host didn't show up and she still <laughs> continued. Yeah. I mean, screaming. Like, like wow. absolutely crazy town. Wow. While also doing hosting a trivia night, you would think she'd want to choose one or the other to focus on. That's what I'm saying. I Women, can, we multitask. I can only imagine that she wasn't supposed to host that night, uh. and then she had to because when I t I've never seen our bartender goes never seen somebody so into sports. <laughs> like he was scared of her, and I was like, yeah, I'm the person cl sitting closest to her. Like I can't yeah. even deal. So it was an interesting night, but I want to go back and I want to win. There you go. What and was your team name? Okay. This is a new one. Okay. And you know I would always do a pun. Yeah. I mean, there and there were some good puns going on there. Yeah. You know, one guy was quiz, nose, subs. 
great. You know, there were lots of good puns, but we just did. I've recently, when we're walking beans and Larry together, started just calling them the nasty boys. <laughs> so good. That's so good. <laughs> I've just been- oh, wait. I was thinking, uh, you know, I was, do you watch Succession? Yeah, I know. Disgusting brothers. <laughs> Disgusting brothers. Disgusting brothers. But I've started being like, well, if it isn't the nasty boys of, <laughs> of the village. And so we were just the nasty boys. And it's so and then an employee was like, if you ever need me to think of a, like a pun name for you, I can. I'm good with puns. And I just went, thanks. <laughs> I was like, I'm actually gr-. I couldn't be like, I'm actually known for puns. <laughs> this was our dogs. Yeah, this is a more sentimental option. Right? Thank you. Uh, so it was a good time. Well, if you and Elliot want to go next time. Yeah, let me know. I love pretzels so much. Yeah, you do. So, and that's a perfect place for them. Do you get it? Do you still keep car pretzels? Yeah, car snacks. Car snacks? The, inside of my car. You've been in it. It's nasty. It's, crazy. it's, it's a nasty. It's a one You're of a nasty the nasty boy. brothers. <laughs> it's uh it's awful it needs to be cleaned so bad mostly i want to say it's a lot of goose hair but it's mostly just crumbs everywhere okay my car snacks today's episode has support from care of if you don't know care of is a subscription service that ships high quality personalized vitamins supplements and powders conveniently to your door every month care of wants to make it easy for you to take care of you and recognizes everyday wellness is different for everyone here's what you do you take a short in-depth quiz about your lifestyle and health goals for a personalized doctor-backed recommendation taking the guesswork out of what supplements are best suited for you care of's daily vitamin packs are made with plant-based compostable film to help limit the impact on the environment without compromising the quality and safety of their products basically your recommendations which you can choose choose to use or you can totally go rogue and get your own kind of mix of vitamins and supplements. They basically send it to you in these personalized daily packets that have your name on it. They're super cute, super convenient. You can throw them in gym bags, purses, backpacks, whatever bag you have on hand. You can travel with them. I love them. They do help me remember to wake up every morning and take my vitamins. The individual daily packs, they're so convenient. You can toss a couple in your car if you want to. And each shipment comes with a customized pamphlet showing you exactly what is in your individual daily packs and why it is recommended specifically for you and your health goals. I love my Care of Vitamins. And if you are interested, for 50% off your first Care of order, go to takecareof.com and enter code TMGW50. Again, for 50% off your first Care of order, go to takecareof.com and enter code TMGW50. Y'all are in for a treat today because support for today's podcast comes from Jenny Kane. If you aren't familiar, oh, well, buckle up, okay? I am obsessed. Think minimalist meets luxury. They have clothing that is classic, comfortable, and California-inspired from cotton or cashmere knit sweaters or flowy summer dresses. They are like iconic staples, okay? You guys know I wear some crazy stuff, but I'm trying to incorporate more high quality essentials. And Jenny Kane has just that and it makes getting dressed easier than ever before. Okay, the first Jenny Kane thing I have is I have their leather knot sandals. I got them in black. I I love them, okay? I've been wearing them nonstop. They fit my feet. Sometimes little dainty lady sandals are too small. These are so comfy, okay? I never wanna take them off. They've got fisherman sweaters. They've got the Chloe crew neck. They've got these core pieces that you can dress up or dress down all season long. When I'm wearing Jenny Kane, I feel like I'm in a Nora Ephron film and that is my (laughs) ultimate compliment, okay? Plus their website, it's like, the most aesthetically pleasing, minimalist California daydream. It might as well be my Pinterest page, okay? Jenny Kane believes in one thing, the art of simplicity. With a focus on comfort, quality, and timeless design, Jenny Kane makes pieces that truly never go out of style, okay? They're simple, stylish, cozy, and chic. Whether you're, you know, dressing for work, errands, a night on the town, they're a go-to for effortless every day outfitting. So find your forever pieces at JennyKane.com. Our listeners are going to get 15% off your first order when you use the code TMGW at checkout. That's 15% off your first order at J-E-N-N-I-K-A-Y-N-E.com, promo code TMGW. The brand is the go-to for all your season staples. Treat yourself, you guys. Get you something nice. Get you a sweater that you're going to keep for decades because you deserve it. Um, 
But yeah, should we talk about the events that happened prior in the day? It was a hell of a Monday, you guys. I'm so excited to have um, introduced Mae Marie and Chip to their first 40X viewing experience. You guys, Woo! we all went to go see the Super Mario movie. Is that what it's called? Mario Brothers? Super Mario Brothers? Is it just called Super Mario Brothers? Something like that. Something yeah. like that. <laughs> you guys Mario know. and Luigi? You guys yeah. know that one. Uh, we went to go see that in 4D, which at, you- 40X. Have, 40X. Don't know what the X is for. Extreme. I, I, I guess so. Uh, you've heard Grace talk about on here. So obviously mm -hmm. I was primed. You guys actually saw the movie on Friday. And then I was like, do you want to go see it on Monday? And so this was your second viewing. Yeah, which was great because after we saw it on Friday, we both were like- this would be really fun and, and 40X. 40X. And then, of course, we're going to meet you guys down there. And the whole time we're just like, is 40X as fun as we remember? Is it as cool uh, as we think or is it really lame? I don't know. We like it. We'll have to see with fresh eyes from them. Well, I absolutely think you did it justice. Good. Yeah, I thought so, too. We were talking about it after we left yesterday, and I was like, that was a really fun one. The thing is, OK, we get there, we get to the lobby, we get our troughs of popcorn. Chip and uh, I each get a tall boy of beer. Well, Chip, no, Chip did the thing where he went up to order <laughs> your guys' food, and then he turns around, and Elliot and I are having a thorough discussion about whether he's getting corn dog bites or a hot dog. He was torn. He was very torn, and Chip just goes, buckets where it's at. <laughs> We were like, what? It was buckets where it's at. You got to get the look at that little bag. You got to get bucket. And we're like, oh, popcorn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to go bucket. We're, we're already going to go bucket. I'm not giving you buckets where it's at. He goes, look at that little bag. You got to get a bucket. I was like, okay. Oh, I love him. Um, no, but I understand Elliot's mindset because every, I'd say twice a year. Mm-hmm. I start craving a veggie hot dog so bad, it's all I think about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could easily go to the store, just buy that, but I only want the one yep. and the one bun. Mm -hmm. I think about all the places that serve them. And I just hyper, as the kids are saying on TikTok, I hyper fixate about a hot dog. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. For a long time. Yeah, he gets um, in his corn dog hyper fixations. And um, to the point where <laughs> he's texting me while I'm at like running errands. And I've been like, what do you need food wise? And they'll be like corn dogs. And I've misread it and bought um, Oscar my like the cocktail weenies. Yeah. And oh, yeah. The um, croissant rolls yeah. to make oh, pigs in a blanket. blanket. And then he'll be like, what? What did you do? <laughs> and I'm like, I got it. <laughs> I got it. He goes, read the text. It's a corn dog. <laughs> been like oh shit sorry i read that my brain thought he's like i don't God. really want these <laughs> oh my, it, no he killed me because he got there and you were like as soon as y'all got there you were like elliot's been talking about a hot dog <laughs> all, all morning and then we have to wait because he's the only one who gets the hot food so mm -hmm. we're like chilling waiting for his order to come up and it comes out as many corn dogs mm -hmm. i was thrown yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a much different vibe than a hot dog. He made an executive decision when he got up do it. to the front. Yep. You got to do it. Anyway, <sighs> now that we've gotten through the concession stand, yeah, we go into the theater. I'm so excited. I know you uh, were nervous. I was nervous. And it looks like a normal movie theater. That's what killed me. Is yeah. I thought we were going to go be sitting in like gamer chairs. Right. <laughs> Like, I fully thought I was going to be in like this crazy thing. And we just sit down. And I'm like, you're telling me? This mm -hmm. is the 40. I actually, Grace, when yeah. we walked in, I was like, I bought the wrong fucking screening. No. I thought I thought I had brought us to like just a 3D movie. No, we are like we knew because we've been there well, before. You see the the water, water on, on or button. off button. Uh-huh. Yeah. So we get there. What I'd like to point out is or ask you, actually, mm -hmm. were the previews in 3D or did we all just wear the glasses? <laughs> <laughs> memory that the previous time the that the trailers were also in the 40x experience they were. but they weren't this time no. so it was like truly seriously this lingering blue ball um like moment where i could tell that you were just like waiting for something to indicate i just kept doing this yeah, I, I just kept taking my glasses off being like, is all, this in 3D? We all put the glasses on, then we had about a half hour of trailers <laughs> that we all just sat and stared at. An actual, <laughs> like, to the moment, half hour, and then once it gets through all the previews, it goes, it was like, you may now put on your 3D glasses. I was like, 
just like I probably just ruined my eyes for a half <laughs> hour straight. As soon as then the movie started, I was like, oh, this is 3D. Yeah, it was different. It was very different. But what I will say is out of the gate, when those seats started moving, <laughs> I <laughs> felt like I was being whipped. It was way it was way yeah. more intense than I expected. Yeah, they they do a little preview where they like let you know these are all the elements that yeah. might be happening at any point throughout this film. So they do some mist, they do some lightning, lightning, they do some fog, they do like a little scent, they shake you up a little bit. And I will say just overall mm -hmm. the that's the most amount of water i've ever experienced in a 4dx <laughs> at one point we were just being rained on i have never in the now th <laughs> three or four times that i've gone like i feel like they had just refilled the tanks and yeah. like opened the nozzles and it was full force i've never had that well, much. well the first like water like st not steam because it was cold, but misting that Spray happened up. was so intense. And then you went down to put your popcorn <laughs> on the ground and got sprayed in the face. I got like America's <laughs> Funniest Home Videos. I was like, this is going to start shaking. Let me put my bucket on the ground right now. And I got hosed in between my eyes from like where uh -huh. this microphone is to my mouth was just uh, like the way a human sprays a cat when it's on the table yeah. i got sprayed and my head oh. flew back and it was so it was so new oh. into the movie i'm being whipped yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm going crazy right you guys i go we're on wipeout i could feel the people behind me laughing at me getting sprayed in the face <laughs> from that thing oh, oh, it was then, a perfect movie to see though yeah i mean like with the movements uh look they they fully do mario kart yeah and we're yeah. in chairs the only thing i will say had a blast had a blast is that i think we chose the chairs I that were broken. on their last leg well so as <laughs> soon it sounded like they were dying <laughs> there underneath was a our noise weight. there was a noise throughout the film <laughs> that sounded like the chair was breaking <laughs> And then I, Elliot and I immediately remembered that we've heard this mm. in the theater before and we always thought it was like another chair. Yeah. And so I think all the chairs do that. Oh, we were, like, we just, we were sitting in a different section last time and heard that same noise like and thought our chair was broken yeah. and thought we chose like the broken chair. So I think they all do it. I feel like they all need to be like greased up or yeah. something. We need a little grease down there because the uh, hydraulics were like... <laughs> <laughs> you could hear it in the quiet moments of the film. Well, it was so quiet. It was like a big crazy scene. You know, we're we're up here. And then it just sounded like, <laughs> like I was like I was like, did my chair just cry? <laughs> he couldn't. And I was like, can other people hear and think Ours. that our chair is doing this? But that's what happened to us last time. Okay. In a different spot. So it makes me think that all of them might well, sound like that. I also didn't know if it was because our four were like connected. And so yeah. there was actual four adults because I right. saw the people to the left of us that were four of them right before it started. And it realized that was the only people they split up. Oh, so I wonder if it's like, they know the like the less weights on it, the more you actually like, Oh, go that would for make it. sense. I yeah. mean, it kind of does. That would make sense. The, what did you think of the thing between your feet that makes, how can I hold on? <laughs> Cause that part, there I... was critters came across the screen at one point. <laughs> it was bats. It was bats flying out of a hole. Yeah. Okay. You guys, there's a part, no spoilers, where Luigi <laughs> is in the Badlands or whatever, and he's walking through and there's lava and there's stuff, and he looks in a hole and there's bats, and the bats fly out at him, and that's when they, they did the little wiggly thing at your feet. <laughs> Grace, did I or did I not gutturally scream? You screamed like the only other time I remember you screaming at a mouse on the subway back when we lived in New York, and then I was like, oh, shit. I don't know. I haven't seen this movie in 4DX. I definitely don't remember how many more of those bats come across. And is this going to keep happening? Is Mamrie going to literally lose her <laughs> shit for the rest of this film? The thing film? is, I lost it a little bit every time they did it. Sometimes they were unnecessary. This, <laughs> this one made sense. But for me, I had completely forgotten that you had told me about that element. Yeah. And we were like 30 minutes into the oh, movie. Yeah. And so I was absolutely calm. And then, you guys, I'm not going to reenact it on here. But Chip, we left and he goes, you screamed... <laughs> so loud and i was like that's for sure the loudest 
a scream has been uttered in that movie, period. A hundred percent. Yeah. It it's got like, me good. It's a movie for children. And you were like, <laughs> <laughs> like we were suddenly watching the scariest horror film that's ever happened when Honestly, what happened was really cute looking evil bats just flew across the screen. <laughs> but what touches your feet? I think it's like an airsoft like situation. I think it's like it shoots air out and it I makes it, it like feel, a ribbon. But it reminds me exactly of Honey, I Shrunk the Audience Ta- ride where Disney mice World. run across your feet and they simulate that in the movie oh, theater. Oh, God, terrible. But it was so much fun. But I was thinking just because of that moment, like, do they do horror movies in 40X? Because that would be probably fucking insane for there to be like jump scares and you're moving oh with God. it they should that they seems got like to. the pope's exorcist <laughs> <laughs> they're doing the next fast and furious movie right yeah in 40x i think they do a, i mean they obviously do a lot of like action yeah films guardians of the galaxies of all that no i had so much fun watching it i could watch the movie if it was just bowser is that his name yeah jack black yeah it was fantastic but the casting was so weird. I mean, yeah. we don't have to go into Chris Pratt because everyone knows it and Charlie Day and like all of that jazz. But like, it's a funny, cute movie. Mm-hmm. Anya Taylor-Joy as Princess Peach. Yeah. I think it's going for names. I don't know. I, 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 I thought the movie, it's interesting because uh, the 4DX experience obviously made it so much more fun. When we yeah. saw it in a regular movie theater, it was just a fine movie. Yeah. You're like, oh, thank God this is kind of short. Because if this was longer, I'd be like, this wasn't very good. But it's just like short and cute enough. They are like, it could do with one more round of punch up jokes. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, absolutely. More jokes. But I will say, Grace, if there's one thing you described correctly from the 40X experience, mm-hmm. it's the smell. Could that UK? <laughs> there was the same smell. It's the same. And Chip was like, it must have to be like a non allergenic formula or something that doesn't bother people. But that smell I isn't mean, good. It's a bad, bad smell. <laughs> it's truly like, uh, like you said, it's like an aquarium. It's like someone left a like a seashell shaped soap in an aquarium for a week <laughs> and then pulled it out and you're like I'm still getting notes of flowers but it's mainly just m- mildew yeah. and when I tell you Chip has the most sensitive nose in the world yeah like I don't wear perfume around him and as soon as that happened I was like he buckle up <laughs> He didn't complain once or anything, but okay. I was still just like, every time it squirted, I was like, side, side eye, uh-huh. side eyeing him. Like, are you going to throw up? Yeah. <laughs> and I, I couldn't tell. Cause I'm like, oh, to me, the smell is like so musky yeah. and like algae tank ish, but maybe to other people, this smells totally pleasant and different. I don't know. I had so much fun. To me, it felt like being on a ride at Universal Studios in like 1995. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was, I think we accidentally or purposely picked a really great film to do it for the first time because it's like just enough amount of time of getting jostled around constantly. (laughs) Right, before you're like, uh, I'm going to ralph my corn dogs. Yeah, and there was a lot less back punches in this one because there's a lot less like major fighting scenes oh, uh, ant-man we got punched in the back like every five seconds oh, no. i felt like she yeah. been having a bad back oh <laughs> lord no it was it was a blast i'll go back any day of the week yeah super fun preferably a monday because it was very empty oh i think they only do it during the week i don't think they do it on the weekend oh okay I think that that's makes part sense. of it too that makes sense people are always talking about self-care this self-care that but what about self-care while you sleep well honey that is where blissy pillowcases come in wow okay blissy is an award-winning 100 percent mulberry silk pillowcase i've seen them all over the internet and then they wanted to come and give us a few for the podcast i was excited because it's made of silk Silk is what's best for your hair and skin. It reduces fizz, tangles, which honey, I can get a tangle by just blinking, and it prevents breakage. That's because it keeps the moisture in your hair and keeps your skincare products and natural moisture on your skin while cotton like literally absorbs it off your face like a towel. So you can say goodbye to wrinkles, dry, flaky, and red skin in the morning and wake up with healthier and shinier hair that won't 
take you an hour to fix. Blissies are also temperature regulating because silk has naturally insulating properties so you don't overheat while you sleep. This is for you. There are a lot of dupes out there, okay? Dupes are all the rage. People claim that satin can be an alternative to silk, but that is not the case. Satin is made from synthetic fibers like polyester while silk is luxurious, all natural. Silk is more breathable, moisture wicking, and gentle, and it's durable and long lasting. So think of this pillowcase like an investment. You're getting better sleep and waking up feeling ready to take on the day. Plus, they're washable and hypoallergenic. Blissy pillowcases are made of 100% mulberry silk, which is naturally hypoallergenic, so you can sleep more comfortably without itching or rashes. And unlike other silk pillowcases, they're the highest quality silk and machine, washable and durable. We love that. It's a perfect gift for someone, okay? Girlfriends, send it to your girlfriends. Plus, it comes in gift-ready packaging, so they'll be sure to love it. I absolutely love my Blissey. I, I feel like my hair when I wake up is all a mess. And here it's like, it's sleek. I wake up looking like I just went to bed. Blissey pillowcases are the best ones on the market. They have a ton of different prints and colors and they make great gifts. So there's an option for literally everyone and men love them too. They have over 1.5 million raving fans so you could be the next. Try now risk-free for 60 nights at blissey.com slash TMGW and get an additional 30% off. That's B-L-I-S-S-Y dot com slash TMGW and use code TMGW to get an additional 30% off. You are going to wake up feeling better than ever. Okay, now speaking of getting punched in the back. Yeah. We got a Love is Blind reunion. Oh, man. I had, I'll say, back to back, two very interesting viewing experiences from 40X to uh, Sunday afternoon sitting in my living room with Elliot going, well, we're trapped. Were you, (laughs) so I was writing and so I got like a text from a friend right you know i don't know like 5 15 that was like mm-hmm. isn't it crazy it hasn't started and i was like what hasn't started oh we watched we turned it on right at five because oh elliot was like you know what i'm into this let's watch this and i was like great i have been hating hating the idea of a live reunion Me too. uh once i first heard that they were doing a live reunion i was like why are they doing this okay. i don't understand it this makes me one nick and vanessa are bad hosts oh when we'll it's get into recorded that. This isn't yeah. going to go well. Yeah. And two, as an audience member, like I rather watch the producers put together a package of the finale mm-hmm. that is reflective of the season that has been packaged together mm-hmm. for us. I don't want to watch the struggle <laughs> of this performance. Um, it's never been my favorite thing. I only trust Jeff Probst as a host to do anything live. Mm, That's the okay. only host I trust in a live scenario. You know what's crazy? I watched my first episode of Survivor last week. (gasps) It's really good. I've never into it. I've never watched it, and Chip got into it when he was in the Cayman Islands because of his coworkers. (gasps) Oh, we're super into it. Okay, I mean, like Steve came over and we like had a night, and we will come over. We watch every Wednesday night. Carolyn is the best, and reminds me so much of Melissa. It's wild. I'll see Uh, you on. I'll see you on Wednesday. Done. Um, But (laughs) no, as far as the live finale goes, I feel the same way. There was no reason for it to be live, and like you said, like. A Real Housewives finale, they film for like all day, nine hours yes. and then put together a single hour so they can make sure that they cover everything that an audience member might be curious to be yeah. covered and that they give proper time and attention to things that come up spur of the moment in the act on the day. Right. But also because, look, these people, unlike Real Housewives who've been on like the air for like forever like these people don't have any media training and so like they could be asked a question and just be like yeah it was great and like not know how to elaborate so it's like you have to like continue coaxing and like get them to get some like actual sound bites and that's the thing and and that's like Andy Cohen even said he was like yeah I got an answer because I asked five different ways yeah you can't do that on live screening and then the other thing about Netflix deciding to go live it's like Netflix you've been safe a safe place for me yeah you know what I mean? Yeah. Like you've been an actual library and now I'm yes. going in and, and and there can be improv. No thanks, bud. Exactly. I didn't. I was like, who is doing this to compete with what? The Bachelor finale? That's the I can't. And Elliot was trying to explain. He's like, I guess they'll have taping. more. They op- suck. But it just it was like it's it really just destroyed the integrity of that platform like instantaneously Damn, unless they want to give us a show <laughs> i know but i mean this to say it was such a bizarre mm-hmm. um situation and then we sat there for an hour 
And we were, because we got then into the mode where you're like, this is ridiculous yeah. and hilarious. Oh, and Twitter inter- was the best. Twitter, it was like, you know, the same as when um, Biden got elected, that you're like, yeah. I love Twitter right now. Yeah. This is a good place to hang out right oh, now. Oh, yeah, like finally. the Trump arrested day was like, yeah. well, it looks like I'm hanging out with my old friend Twitter <laughs> yeah, exactly. for the rest of the night. Me and Twitter are getting some beers. It was so people uh, it was also like <laughs> elliot and i were laughing so hard because i was like people are unraveling like yeah. people are losing their minds right now and also the absolute absurdity that we're all kind of kidnapped to this situation right oh, yeah. now because we wanted to watch succession as soon as it started but i was like now we're gambling now we're yeah. gambling with uh do we watch succession we don't want to stop that and but go then back you over also here. go is it my connection yeah, I know. to close it out. So I got home and, you know, immediately started doing the like, huh, well, maybe it's maybe I can do it on my laptop. Oh, well, maybe I need to do it on my phone. Maybe I close it out. And I had like one friend yeah. on that text thread. It was like the text thread of people who was in Palm Springs the other weekend where someone was like, well, I- I'm watching mine. And I was like, yeah, wait, are they? Oh, well, then how are you? Mine did not come on till like yesterday till Same. we got back from the movie. Grace, when I tell you, I only got four minutes in and I had to stop. I watched the whole thing. It gave me anxiety. Nick and Vanessa are terrible hosts. Yeah. It made me, like, I need to feel safe. Yeah. I need to feel, I feel safe in Andy Cohen's hands. uh, Yeah. And Andy Cohen has worked really hard to be a really great host, but we're both hosts. We've done a lot of hosting. The first rule is it's not about you. Well, it is snap, not your snap, show. Snap, snap, keep going. <laughs> it's not your show. You are the one putting focus on the people that it is about. And I, you know, you can only assume and wonder about so many things because we're not there in real time. But like Vanessa, I feel like overcompensates so much for Nick's quietness, I guess, or just more reserved kind of whatever that she and she also I think tries to over put herself in the position of like I'm just a regular audience member and I got all the same questions and I want to know all the same tea and I'm Mm going to like really point out all the same I'm not going to let you uh gaslight me with your shit that it's like no no no, it's not about you it's not about you it's not about you at all and you can stop doing asides to the camera and to the audience that are like haha right guys (laughs) oh it's just so uncomfortable like I have I have you finished it at all no, I only watched four minutes. Girl, she sent, I read an article today. She sent Paul apology flowers. Stop it. And he said, I quote. But that's a nerdy sci- That's a scientist, right? Yes. <gasps> he said, and I quote, honestly, she never wanted to understand what I was saying. She just wanted to punish me. You got to watch it because she really, for some bizarre reason, like honed in. You got to know when to move on and you got to know when to cut people off. Yeah. And she would hone in on a few people that clearly... She just emphasized, showed all of her cards about her own bias. Like, you can't mm-hmm. have personal bias. It's not about you yeah. and any of your opinions. And she just kept, like, tripling down on incredibly awkward moments of trying to get, trying to, like, push someone to say something right. different than what they mean in the scenario. And it was just Ouch. so uncomfortable. Do you think... Okay, I'm going to say one thing and then I'll ask this. Yeah. First of all, Paul, of all people... Paul, but also um, I have a bad habit, fully aware of doing the whole like, oh, yeah, well, this happened to me to like em- to like oh, yeah, sympathize with someone of being like, well, you know, I and then realizing like, oh, no, this might come off as like you're just I'm making it about com- me. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like she does that where it's yeah. like we don't need to know. And you guys have been married 11 years. Like we get it. Yeah, it's fine. Um, but anyway, I was going to say, do you think. This was the nail in their hosting coffin. I don't know how Netflix doesn't like we now live in a world where it's like Coliseum level feedback. You know, the entire audience. We can watch. We can Mm -hmm. read ad nauseum the audience's (laughs) raw opinions about this situation. So I feel like it would be really trolly of Netflix to keep them on one they serve no purpose in the show. They serve no purpose. Did and- they pitch this show? What are they there for? I have never understood. Mm-mm. And she even made a point to say, you might have noticed other than um, or different than the first few seasons that Nick and I aren't very involved in this because it's not about us. It's about your journey. 
And I was like, then why even have well, it there? You contradict that for the next hour and a half because you're really wanting to insert yourself into all of these situations. Mm-hmm. Two things. They not only let them host it and took a huge gamble of doing the first live event with them. Yeah. They gave them, or at least Nick, the spinoff to host the perfect match. One, oh, really? Yeah. And, oh, God, it's so terrible. He, he like open it. Uh, like in the trailer or the first episode, it was like, I'm Nick Lachey. And you might know, I know a thing or two about love. I'm like, what? You got married too young and put it on MTV with Jessica Simpson and then y'all broke up and you got married again? You don't so know you're an love. expert? He knows they should really lean. I mean, th- the reason that he's there is because he helped champion the idea of putting a relationship in a reality format. Okay. Like, okay. I see. I at see least that's my, uh, like, when I look at that, I go, I can make, connect the dots that he and Jessica were like on the forefront of like the same with um, Ozzy and his family mm-hmm. on MTV that it's like, oh yeah, you really helped establish this like platform. True. But they're not because he's remarried to Vanessa and she's like, we're not going to talk about that stuff. No, we're not talking about that. That, We'll talk about CSI Hawaii or whatever she's on. I just do not understand what their connection or relationship is in this show at all. And it simply cannot be that they just have a longstanding marriage because I'm sure you could find some really good hosts out there with some longstanding relationships that would be better at this. I mean, if anything, like figure out a crossover. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like be like oh and this uh, i'm like what what are other shows on netflix what are other shows on netflix but like trying to be like show some other stuff bake like, off get an old oh yeah <laughs> like i would have rather honestly would have been great to have just like the girls of selling sunset grill them oh yeah they were like just fans and you know totally. something i couldn't believe it i couldn't believe it she gets really into asking and this with the internet it's fucking furious about it for a good reason she gets really into asking everyone about their baby timeline and who's having a baby and when's everyone having a baby and i'm like did producers tell you to ask this because this doesn't seem like the way people talk to each other (laughs) anymore these days especially in this format we're like let's look at your guys's track record you have like one lasting marriage (laughs) over four they actually have a couple from season one I thought they only have one from season one. No, they have uh, the 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 Cameron. Burnett is still married. Oh, Bur- yeah, Cameron. And they- what's her face? But Burnett and and the other yeah, girl are still yeah. married. At okay. least they were when I like you know randomly <laughs> look at their Instagram six months ago for no reason. Yeah, well, I will say I I I know that hosting is truly an insanely yeah. difficult job you have so I much don't, experience but I don't even want like that's so hard to do that I'm like for them to take that on good luck but if they right now if Netflix said knock 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 Grace how big hello yes we'd uh, like to lock you in 100 for the first live 100%. finale percent you guys I, you guys get the petition going y'all used to make petitions for everything <laughs> But it's like this kind of shit went through growing pains because even when I watched the Married at First Sight reunions, the guy, Kevin Fraser, I think is his name, that hosts it. The first time he did it, it was really awkward and uncomfortable Mm -hmm. and they had a different host before him. And now he's gotten way, way better at it. So it like comes with time, but they don't seem to have gotten any better. at it. But here's the thing. It comes with time, but not live. Right. Right. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. Like, where do they go from here with all that because even i saw chesca lee uh oh, yeah. francesca she, she made mm-hmm. a really great video on instagram this morning calling out some of the things that she saw from an experienced like tv producer and writer that they did wrong and i just like her biggest uh one of the points that i was like yes is that they because they couldn't go live edit it put it up put it up put, put it, it up. up but it was still over an hour and a half and they just have people going on these tangents for fucking ever. For and like stretching. Irina just goes on these long ass oh. tangents as if she's trying to remember all the PR point bullet list that she was given to tell everyone why she's a bad person. But she still takes ownership. But she was having panic attacks, too, and blah, 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 over and over and over again. And no one's cutting her off. And it's like, you guys now had time to edit this. Mm-hmm. Give it to yeah. us like a little like show concern for the audience. <laughs> well, one last finale we got to talk about. Yeah. Drag Race. I know. That was pretty great. That was pretty great. I mean, I think Sasha Colby 
if you nope. haven't seen it. But. And if you haven't seen it, like, you're not that big of a fan. Yeah. Like, you've seen it on Twitter. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, I, uh, Sasha Colby is amazing, a Incredible. legend. She was so hot in that finale. Oh I was my Team God. Anitra. I was Team Anitra. I know. I love it. I, ha- I bought Anitra's shirt. You did? Yeah. I got a, one of her merch shirts. It's <gasps> like her eyeball with the scar through it. Yes. And I was wearing it the other day, and Elliot goes, What are you wearing? He goes, What is that? I was like, It's a drag race shirt. He's like, I know, but what? It looks like, um, do you know what that looks like? And I was like, no. He's like, it looks like a vagina. Oh, really? <laughs> and it looks, it's like, I was like, oh, no. The, the, it's just single eye with a scar that through it. So and funny. it looks like a hairy vagina. Oh. And he's not wrong. But um, I love it. I'm going to have to look shirt. it up. I loved her heart. Um, Me too. Scarf. It was her thing. Sasha Valor moment. And like, I think Sasha came out in that huge coat and she looked amazing. Yeah. But like, Anitra was dancing yeah you know what i mean so i know it's like a, a culmination of the whole season so i totally get it but i was team anitra but can i just say mm-hmm. a little rant yeah why do they make them lip sync to original songs at the finale why do we take the time to write original songs yeah. that they aren't writing they aren't singing they just have to perform to the audience who's not going to get that into it because they've never heard the song like let them mm. choose the song that's like what is iconically the most you song yeah that like everyone else knows yeah i see that i also i mean i do like the original songs because i do feel like that's part of the work as a drag queen anyways that everyone releases their own music but that's new yeah that's new to drag race I feel some of like. the songs end up being pretty great i heard Corey and tyler talking about it because they're friends with leland who yeah. is the um composer of a lot of those songs oh yeah and they're being sang live on with orville peck on it yeah he was great and the the question they had that i agree with is like they wonder how involved are the queens in the construction yes. of these songs like how much input do they have over how this song sounds what it's about do they get any kickback if right. it like takes off right, right right no i mean like hey no hate i love i love everything about drag race but a little bit about it it feels like we're putting on a play yeah and it, well, it's <laughs> tough too because like they're writing four songs four original songs some of them are a bit more bops than others so you're like yes. some of the performances get like i loved lux's song uh Fashion. about fashion yeah same that i was like this is really fun to listen to well lux came out and did fashion and i was like see anitra would have killed that yeah yeah and anitra's song about lotus was hugely personal but i felt like lux's song was more like fun to listen to right off the bat so um, there you go i mean i did see some familiar faces in the audience i would have yeah. liked to have been one i know same willow pill by the way looked that dress that was actually like a willow tree uh-huh. was incredible. Just now realized it was a willow tree. I just only know that because uh, of her Instagram. So. Okay. <laughs> I was like, look at the cherry blossoms. <laughs> she knows it's cherry blossom season. <laughs> no, two big finales. Yeah, One it was week. a great weekend. A lot of, a variety of viewing experiences. Honestly, a fantastic weekend to sit on your butt. Loved it. I loved every second of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, last thing I'll say, just because I think it's funny. Did you hear that Ron DeSantis is threatening Disney World that yeah. he's going to build a prison? Uh-huh. <laughs> Elliot loves. <laughs> so and did you see that the first tweet that Disney World put out right after that absolute fucking loser maniac said that? No. They put a tweet out uh, promoting gay pride parade yes. at Walt Disney World. And people are like, I don't know if this is uh, like planned, but this is fantastic first fantastic. tweet. Yeah. Fantastic. Oh, my God. <sighs> I mean, what a way to kick off the week. The Truly. 4D, the all of the thing, the trivia. I mean, it yeah. Get we really adventures. squeezed it in. We really squeezed <laughs> it in at the end. And we'll see um, some of you uh, Friday for yes. some Dream Phone. Yeah. If you guys aren't patrons yet, literally what you'll do is you'll sign up, figure out the tier you want. I get a lot of people asking what tier Barflies is. It's the first one. Five bucks a month. Yep. Um, all the posts, all the Barflies. And then what we do is like... Right before we go live, we go on Patreon and we post the the live stream link yep. from YouTube. Because so, it takes us a second to figure out you know, and make sure that we're streaming in the right place. You know. <laughs> okay. Well, this got weird. Yep. Yep.